Blight killed a million people during the Irish potato famine in the 1840s. The blight quickly spread around the world, decimating 70 to 80 percent of crops. So blight can be very serious and destructive in our gardens. Today we are continuing my series on dealing with pests and diseases organically and talking about early and late blight. Blight is a disease that strikes fear into the hearts of gardeners. It's destructive and can wreak havoc on vegetable crops. Blight has been one of the most consequential plant diseases in modern history. It is typically caused by a fungus. However, some types of blight can also be bacterial, depending on the specific pathogen involved. Early and late blight are caused by different pathogens that happen at different times of the year. Most often blight affects plants in the nightshade family, so potatoes, tomatoes, peppers. Hey there, welcome to my channel. If you are new, I'm Amy, a master gardener, semi-retired science teacher, and wildlife rehabilitator. You can check out my book links in the description. I'm excited about spring and have a new garden space to play in. Early blight commonly affects tomatoes and potatoes, causing dark, concentric spots on leaves and stems. Early blight shows up as a drying leaves at the bottom of the plant. If you look at this leaf, you can see the circular brown spots on them. As the spots get bigger, yellowish rings appear, giving the areas a target-like appearance. Eventually, the spots run together, leading to the leaf tissue dying. Early blight can lead to total defoliation of lower leaves and even the death of an infected plant. Late blight, notorious for causing the Irish potato famine, spreads quickly in gardens and can result in total crop failure of untreated. Late blight is a water mold that likes cool, damp conditions between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Prolonged hot days can stop the pathogen from spreading. Late blight spores can travel via air long distances and get deposited when it rains. It has symptoms of water-soaked lesions on leaves, stems, and fruit that cross over the center vein of the leaf. Blotches appear on stems and hard, crusty lesions will form on the fruits. You can see large sections of dry brown foliage. Unlike early blight, which is first seen on the lower stems, late blight infections move inward from the outside of the tops of the plants. I'm going to do a separate video on this one, fire blight, which has been something I have struggled with greatly. Blight spreads rapidly under warm, wet conditions or when plants are crowded with poor air circulation. This is also a big no-no. If you've watched my potato growing video, you know I like straw mulch for potatoes. In this situation, you have dirt, which may contain spores, splashing up onto your plants. So let's talk prevention. Mulch is very important to protect your plants from soil-borne diseases. Also, this is my garden, so I can tell you that the bedding from the goats is what I put in here. So it contains straw, or covering the soil, protecting from the, you know, conduct protecting from pathogens, and it also had the manure in it to provide nutrients. Overcrowded plants create a humid environment that encourages blight. Staking also helps with airflow and lowering humidity around plants. Follow spacing recommendations to improve air circulation. Hmm, this is my downfall, as I like to plant crops close together to maximize production. Water the ground, not the plant. Drip irrigation works well, or a soaker hose. Select plant varieties that are bred for resistance to specific types of blight. So read the description in your seed catalogs. This is from Fedco, one of my favorite seed catalogs. And they say that dark red Norland potato resists cracking early blight and scab. So good for me, 
or in any area with wet springs. I'm a big fan of composting. However, do not compost plants with early blight as it can overwinter even on dead tissue. Late blight does not survive on dead tissue and freezes on the soil surface, which will kill the spores. So don't let this happen. This plant is contaminating everything around it. Pick off any dying leaves and toss them and then wash your hands so you don't spread it in the garden. Sterilize any pruners you're using. After I prune any dead leaves away, I spray the plant and its neighbors with neem. Make sure to spray the stem as well. Neem oil is a natural fungicide that can help suppress blight and other fungal diseases. Apply it to the leaves and stems every 7 to 14 days. The next step up would be a copper fungicide. Proceed with caution as too much can burn your plants. And even though it's approved for organic gardens, it is toxic to fish and amphibians. Baking soda treatment for early and late blight and powdery mildew is a popular home remedy that works by creating an alkaline environment on the leaf. I love baking soda for cleaning, but I'm not a fan of using it on plants. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. It is basically a salt. The salt inhibits regular water flow and dehydrates plants, as well as building up on a toxic level and can burn your plants. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate everybody and I hope that you have a fabulous day and a wonderful garden season.